Hi, my name is Paige. Welcome to my channel. So just a few days ago, I filmed a video called the bookish boyfriend tag. That, of course, was filmed with my real boyfriend, Troy. Yeah. He's like Harry Potter. There yeah. He's That's like, don't nice. talk about my mom! <laughs> and it got me thinking that maybe it's time to give my other boyfriends a little bit of time in the sun. Of course, I am referring to my book boyfriends. No, I am not in a polygamous relationship. <laughs> Probably a lot of the book boyfriends that I'm about to list are actual romantic interests in the books that they're in, so they're not just you know, they're not side characters that I'm just attracted to because usually if the character in question isn't the romantic interest then I'm not really paying much attention to them. That's not always the case. I mean, if the romantic interest sucks and another character will be better for the protagonist or is just cooler, then sometimes I do have crushes on those type of characters. Like, for example, I did like Adrian in the Vampire Academy series more than I liked Dimitri. But anyway, Maybe that will be talked about another time. Before we get started with the list, I thought I'd mention that I am back with my raspberry tea in a different mug. I hope anyone who is watching appreciates that reference, and thank you, Kim, for giving me this mug. So to get started, I thought I would mention my past flames, my, pa my ex-book boyfriends in a way, even though I kind of still like them. I don't think that if I reread the series that they are a part of, I would feel the, really the same way about them. Um, I think they were kind of a thing of the past for me. We just grew apart, you know? So I thought I'd mention them anyway, just so you know. The first one on this short list is Edward from Twilight. When I was younger, Twilight meant a lot to me, and to be honest, it still has a place in my heart. Not so long ago, I would reread the series probably every year, every other year, just for nostalgia. But I did notice that reading it probably last year, I think, or trying to read it, I couldn't really get through it. I think I'm on board with everyone else when I say Breaking Dawn was the most disappointing book in the whole series, but even just reading the first book, um, the whole climax of that book, the whole complication with James, it just makes no sense the way they handle it and it was just hard for me to get through so I never actually finished that reread and I don't know if I'll be picking up that series anytime soon because of that. I think I've officially grown out of it for now. However, with that being said, I always really did like Edward. I think I was always on Team Edward. I think I tried to switch over to Team Jacob just to be different a little bit and I do have a soft spot for werewolves. But Edward was always my guy. I think looking back, I mean, obviously he has some weird parental qualities, like he treats Bella sometimes like his daughter, which is pretty creepy, of course, but um, overall, I think he really cares about her and I think it's really sweet the way that he kind of puts her well-being above everything else, you know, so that was really cool to me when I was younger and it still is, you know, nice, but he is now on the Old Flames list. The next two on this list are Stark and Heath from House of Night. I read House of Night around the same time that I was reading Twilight, so it was kind of one of my first experiences with YA. And of course, I mean, I was obsessed with it. There were really hot vampire dudes that were cool, I don't know. I used to reread it a lot when I was younger, even though I never actually finished the series. And I think I mainly liked the series because of the inner circle, not even necessarily because of the love interest, even though there were a lot of them. I really liked the dynamic between all the friends, that was like my favorite part of the series. But anyway, I used to really like Heath because he was just such a mess and I think I really liked that when I was younger. It just felt like he was so reliant on Zoe and that was like cool to me, like he seemed like he's so desperate for her that I just always really liked him and he's also kind of one of those puppy dog characters kind of irresistible a little bit messed up I don't know I also really loved Stark I haven't read the series in a long time but from what I remember he just was kind of that stoic really strong really centered character that was like really a nice balance because I mean let's be honest Heath was a full-out mess and I mean look what happened with I think Eric and Lauren I think his name was like teacher guy oh man that series truly messed with my young brain because everybody just everybody betrayed zoe and i think i just really like stark and heath because they were always very steady characters even when they had their little you know fights and everything they just seemed like they were always going to be there and we won't talk about what happens in the future because i never finished the series for a very specific reason involving heath so one more on this old flame list and that is Four from the Divergent series. I had a hard time deciding if I wanted to put him on the old flame list or if 
I want to put him on any list because I think rereading Divergent I would still really like him but then I kind of remembered how he was in the last book I think it was it's been a long time since I read Divergent but in the last book I think he he doesn't he get like super jealous and just sort of terrible and I'm not saying that characters can't have you know their their moments of being unsure and kind of unsupportive but I just remember being like who are you so for that reason, I think it would actually really annoy me to reread the series and have to put up with that moody four again. Um, so for that reason, he is an old flame, so I still like him, or I still appreciate what he was to me back then, but he's definitely not a current book boyfriend. Without further ado, let's get into my actual current book boyfriends. Yes, I am dating all of them at the same time. <laughs> Sorry, Troy. By the way, these boyfriends aren't going in any specific order, although I am saving kind of my favorite for last, so stay tuned for that. I mean, I think he's pretty obvious, I guess. So this specific boyfriend is actually a pretty new one, but it is Michael Fawn from The Kiss Quotient. I'm not even sure where to begin with this guy, but... And I'm not going to spend that much time on it anyway because I've actually talked about The Kiss Quotient a few times up to this point. But all I'm going to say about him is that... He's just a really naturally supportive character. He obviously, you know, hits a rough point. He is in a rough point when we meet him in this novel and he definitely goes through some soul searching and just self-identifying crises. But I think that is what makes him so amazing is because he's going through all of this like really hard, terrible stuff and he's still really nice and really just naturally compassionate. He's also like terribly attractive. Like I think it might just be the dynamic he has with the protagonist but he's just really <laughs> He definitely has some more feminine qualities which make him um, not like a, a manly man. He's not like that kind of attractive. He's just like confident in a really attractive way. So he makes it to this list even though he is a new addition. Just to kind of get them out of the way, the next two on this list are Harry Potter and Sirius Black. I am the kind of girl who really does like the main male protagonist sometimes. Like I'm just that simple sometimes I guess. I do have a crush on Harry Potter. I mean if you really think about it, Harry is kind of described to be really honestly super attractive. He has unruly, super messy black hair and bright green eyes, and he's supposed to be like pretty tall. I just don't know how you're supposed to not like Harry Potter, especially growing up with him as like the guy, the chosen one. I mean, he's brave. He's compassionate. He's a little bit crazy. He definitely doesn't like figure out as much as Hermione does, but he's not dumb. And if he is being dumb, it's honestly for comedy relief because he's talking about like not studying or just not putting as much effort into something as he should be, which is funny. He has a lot of lines in the book that are actually really hilarious. So for that reason, Harry makes it on this list. Now, Sirius Black, same thing, you know, you got the really messy, unruly black hair, you've got, it's, he's constantly described as super attractive. And he's kind of like the same as Harry in that he's kind of spontaneous sometimes, even maybe goofy. Because I do think Harry has a great personality, like I don't think he's one of those protagonists that just kind of falls short of actually having any sort of real uh, personality traits. And I think Sirius shares a lot of those traits, but he also is kind of more of a bad boy. Which, I mean, how can you not appreciate that? So for that reason, he makes it on this list. I really hope that one day a Marauders book or movie or something will come out because I just... Ugh. Anyway, next up is Dalton from the Rockton series by Kelly Armstrong. Eric Dalton is the sheriff of the town called Rockton that the protagonist Casey goes to. I'm not really sure how to talk about him without kind of spoiling things, but I think... I really like him because he has a lot of hidden depth and his personal plot or story is actually a lot deeper than you think when you first start reading. I also just like that he's kind of rough around the edges but is like an entirely different person on the inside. I'm really a sucker for love interests that worry too much. I don't know. I just... Not necessarily love interests that are so protective that they are kind of inhabilitating, but I am a sucker for characters like Dalton, who maybe worry a little bit too much, but at the same time are only searching for the best ways to protect their lady. He's also not described as, like, classically handsome. Um, I don't think that means that he's, like, 
ugly or anything. I just appreciate the fact that he's not supposed to be some hunk dude with like a nine pack. I don't know, that's not, that's not even possible, but you know what I mean. Go Eric Dalton. Okay, next up we have Jamie Frazier from the Outlander series. I mentioned this before in another video, but Jamie is one of my favorite love interests or book boyfriends of all time. I think that's kind of ironic considering there are so many points throughout the books that I'm just like, Jamie, literally why? There's a point I think in Dragonfly and Amber where he goes out somewhere, does some very questionable things, and then comes home gets into a fight with a certain person about those things and I was still like, I love you, which might say something about me, but I really enjoy that he is a very soft person, a very kind of funny person, but in the books following the first book, he becomes much rougher and I like to imagine him as he's described in those kind of later books where he's basically this big giant red-haired viking man Max Max For some reason Jamie with a beard just really makes me laugh. I'm not sure why. I think it is because I picture him to be so soft-hearted and soft-spoken and just almost boyish. I mean, after all, spoiler. When he and Claire get married, she is older than him and much more experienced, so that kind of impression just stayed with me throughout. So next up, we have Levi from Fangirl. I love Fangirl for a lot of reasons, almost an innumerable amount of reasons. Um, I mean, it deals with anxiety perfectly. It really helped me get through my early um, years of college because of the way that I related with Kath. But I also think one of the huge reasons that I fell in love with this book and that the reason why I still like it is because of Levi and Kath's relationship. He has that farm boy, charismatic, um, completely upfront about everything kind of attitude and it really hit me um, by surprise. I wasn't expecting a character like that to show up, especially as a love interest because I am used to the broody um, sort of, not emo, but those kind of love interests. I'm used to those. So when Levi came up, you know, all sweet and just compact and just like a boy, a true real to life boy shows up and just steals my heart away. I just wasn't expecting it. I think he's great for a lot of reasons, but I think the main reason he is great is because he is very open-minded. Um, he doesn't judge anyone. He's very open to accepting Kath's hobbies and the way that she is and even helps her kind of accept that in herself and maybe even grow. He's just like a little watering can of growth and sweetness. Moving on, Let's get to another super cute character, and that is Gansey from The Raven Boys. I couldn't decide if I wanted to put Ronan in here also, but I think I kind of related with Ronan more as like a like a really good friend, um, whereas Gansey, like, he's honestly just the cutest specimen ever. Not only am I a sucker for glasses, okay, but he's just so driven to fulfill his dreams and inspiring others. I mean, he's just a natural born leader. Plus, he's like a weird but perfect mixture of nerdy and preppy that I still don't quite understand. And I just love the way that he is insulting even when he doesn't mean to be and the way that he starts to be able to see that, um, unintentional rudeness in himself and actually tries to correct it because that you know he's just he's just a great character he's like a true born hero leader guy and yet he's also in a body that needs glasses <laughs> i relate so the next two are characters belonging to sarah j mass so yes we have made our first breakthrough into sarah j mass books and that is rowan and sartak from throne of glass i can't even nail down the reasons why i like them so much myself it's hard for me to nail down anything with my reactions as far as Sarah J Mass is concerned because they're just totally unproportionate to probably the reality of things. And by that I mean I just, I freak out a lot about everything that she writes. I don't understand my own mental reactions, I don't get it. But they make this list almost exclusively as far as Ronan is concerned because of that reunion scene, spoiler, between Rowan and Aelin in Queen of Shadows where, you know, they run in the alley and embrace each other. Like, literally this entire book boyfriend crush that I have on him is almost 
just wholly surrounded by that one scene. Of course, you know, I think he's a he's a good character overall. Um, I did really enjoy Air of Fire because of him, but I'm just, every time I think of him, I think of that one scene and how I like almost bawled. I don't even know why. It's just that scene. That's, that's the only reasoning I have behind this inclusion of him. So. Also, I just really liked Sartak, his attitude and the way that he kind of takes everything in stride. He doesn't like freak out about anything. He's a very calm character. So that's why I like him. And that's all I'll say there because that's literally the only reasons I can think of for these two. It just, it is the way it is. So next up we have Kaz Brecker from Six of Crows. Now in one of my videos I did mention that I didn't finish this duology. Um, I did read the entire Shadow and Bone trilogy and I read Six of Crows but I did not read Crooked Kingdom. So I'm pretty sure that my love for Kaz would only grow having read the second book but I just wanted to get that out there. I love the damaged guys. I don't know what, what else I can say about that. I just, as soon as you show up, I was like, I'm gonna like you. I'm gonna like you a lot. Unlike some of the other guys I've mentioned in this list so far, Kaz is not the character that is rough around the edges and soft on the inside. I would pretty much say that he's rough all over, but I thought that was actually really refreshing, the fact that he's kind of willing to do anything as long as it means, you know, his survival and maybe like, a few other people's and even then he seems like a little bit upset about the fact that he has to worry about anyone else not to mention i mean i think i'm just really attracted to brainy guys he's obviously very intelligent to be able to plan any sort of um break in any sort of thievery of this magnitude at least what happens in six of crows and i was just constantly in awe of his ability to surprise me like he's he's always he's always doing something that is like absolutely mind-blowing and yet i didn't i never had a hard time understanding him like i never doubted that he was able to do all the things that he actually did because he is very intimidating character as well so speaking of leah bardugo's books and especially the grisha universe i do want to slide in here the darkling from shadow and bone i almost feel bad about including this guy in here because he's just you know, spoiler, awful. He's literally the most conniving, most evil character, and yet, and yet, I still like him. You know, at the end, the ending of that whole trilogy was heartbreaking to me, and it, it was such a struggle for me throughout because at, at one, at all, most points, I wanted him to die. I wanted him to collapse to the ground dead, and but all the other times, I was like, but what if? What if he was okay? That's just how it is. I, I can't control my crushes, okay? I just, he's here and it, I, we all just have to deal with it. On a brighter note, the next person on this list is Mr. Darcy. I don't even know what to say about Mr. Darcy because he's just, he's just that guy. Like, he is the original kind of jerk turned fantastic love interest. I mean, I think it's clear pretty off the bat that he does have really a hidden depth and really a kindness to him um but at the same time he's also terrible and you know you can't really ignore that fact just because it's an older novel because he's still on everybody's book boyfriend list so there's just something about mr darcy that will continue to live on in my heart and in many others we're almost to the end of this list and the second to last person is derek Salza from the Darkest Power series. I'm not gonna get into the series because I've already talked about the series so much because it was my favorite growing up, but I will say a little bit more about Derek because he has been like my OG book boyfriend since forever. Like he he was even more to me than Edward was. Without spoiling um, any of the storyline, Derek is just Again, he's kind of that broody, really, really highly intelligent character that is, you know, maybe a little bit hard to swallow sometimes, but also really caring, really family oriented. He's not like secretly very charismatic or anything. He's broody, he's nerdy, he's intelligent. Awesome. <laughs> I could go on forever about Derek, but we need to get to the last person on this list. I'm pretty sure that this character is probably on the top of a lot of book boyfriend lists and I don't care because the heart wants what the heart wants. And that person is Resand from 
A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. So Akatar was the first book I read from Sarah J Maas. Um, in fact, I finished the whole trilogy before I even started Throne of Glass and it was just a life-changing experience for me. I had been away from casual reading for a while because I was so busy with school and I was reading a lot for school. Um, I was just really busy with other things in my life. And then Akatar hit me. I'm gonna do a spoiler warning here because I do want to get into the logistics of this character and I think probably a lot of people do know him and have read the series so I don't feel too bad about spoiling the rest of this. So when I read Akatar, I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, I did find that I really liked Sarah J Mass's writing. Um, you know, looking back at it now, I had been away from reading for a long time so maybe it was partially that and partially because her writing is very intriguing. But you know, Rhysand showed up in the first book. I didn't really know what to think of him and it was a very strange experience for me because prior to reading Akatar, any other YA book that I read was, you know, it was always you meant the love interest right away. Um, and it was the same love interest throughout. Maybe there was like a little hiccup here and there, but it wasn't, you always knew who was going to be with the protagonist. And you know, I really, I did like Tamlin. I, I wasn't crazy about him, you know. In fact, there were a couple times where I honestly just wanted to cave his face in. And you know, I'm speaking from the point of view of when I first read the book, so I don't have any of the, you know, influences that I have now about his character. But when Rhysand showed up, I hated it because I couldn't make myself dislike him, which just felt dishonest to me. Like, I, d I felt like I was betraying Tamlin by not despising him, and especially I was felt like I was betraying myself because I do have a really deep hatred of love triangles. And you know, by the end of that book, um, having seen what he'd stepped up to do for Feyre rather than Tamlin, you know, actually trying to save her life, I was very conflicted. I was almost kind of angry. Um, I, I didn't want to continue the series because I thought, oh, well now we're gonna have a love triangle where, you know. And so, you know, I had to really decide if I wanted to continue with the series because it just love triangles truly honestly really frustrate me so you know i let literally a couple days go by because it wasn't that long and i decided to pick up a court of mist and fury i honestly can't even describe to you what that book did to my mental health off the bat i can say that from that specific series akamath is my favorite um because i just wasn't accustomed to realistic anything in YA to be honest. Like I wasn't expecting Feyre to have PTSD um, for that to actually affect her because it doesn't affect so many other protagonists and even adult books that I've read. And you know I'm thrown into this kind of newer darker world where Tamlin's not really helping out with this PTSD or depression that Feyre is having um, and she's having it realistically and all of a sudden Rhysand's there to make things better. That seems like such a dumbed down way of saying it but Rhys might have been the first true feminist love interest that I have ever read in a book series. Rhys definitely changed for me how I view love interests and what you should expect in love interests. You shouldn't be content with just another dude who maybe is nice to the protagonist but isn't actually supportive of them and I just he definitely blew me out of the water. Reese is just he's a trendsetter. So guys that was my list of book boyfriends. My actual list of book boyfriends is actually pretty long so I could do a sequel to this video if you're interested. I was also thinking about maybe doing my favorite book girlfriends because I have a lot of girl crushes that are just they're just amazing. So if you would like to see that please comment below and let me know. Um, if you share some of these book crushes or if you don't share some of these book crushes very specifically then let me know. I'd be curious to know why um, and if you have any different book boyfriends maybe some suggestions for me to get to know them then also let me know that. Well that's it for today and I will see you back here on Thursday. Bye!